people get mad at me from both sides because I think that there's logic to voting for Biden in a swing state. Um, I also don't like I'm not shaming people who don't see that. Yeah. And I even for the first time, I actually see the logic of voting for for Biden in a safe, in a non-swing state because of like, I don't know if this is the, the right thing, but I understand the logic of it. Like Trump's going to try to, you know. Yeah. I, I understand and respect the logic of it too. I think, yeah. I, I think there's, it's one thing to look, there are arguments all over the place, right? right? There's an argument that we need a landslide because Trump's going to try to steal the election. Right. There's an argument that the landslide is going to make Democrats feel like they have a mandate and it's going right. to be organizing a lot harder on the other end. Both right. of those things can be true. And saying that out loud doesn't mean you try to take the election or like right. try to yeah. win by a hair, but it does mean you try to address yeah, the yeah. implications yeah. of the landslide and make make yourself better positioned to come out the other side. So maybe that means, you know, not refraining from making substantive criticisms of Joe Biden when Joe Biden is attacking the left and trying to undermine the work that a progressive right. movement is doing. Maybe we stay silent on his record on, let's say, right. Social Security. Right. He's not coming up right now. Yeah. But when he misrepresents his position on climate change or health care, saying health care is a human right. When he obviously doesn't believe that's when true. He likes private insurance, as he said during the last debate. Explicitly during the debate, right? So and then we correct him. Um, right. And that, that, that he can win despite us, but he's not going to win in ex at our expense. And I think that that kind of nuance is necessary and also kind of sorely lacking. And part of the reason is because if you try to deal in any sort of nuance, the only response is, you must be trying to enable Trump. Right. You don't want Biden to win. Grow up. You're an enemy of us. Yeah. Um, why don't you, you know, Photoshop me in a MAGA hat, call me Diamond and Silk, et cetera, et cetera. Wow. Katie gets it's cool guests because Katie's the coolest, Andrew in. Katie's like literally one of the first leftists I've ever met. And she was um, so warm and delightful. And I will always, so nice. always. Make oh, yeah. That is special. Nice. Thank you, Andrew in. Oh, wait, let's see. What was it? Um, where is it? Uh, I don't know. You got so many cool guests. Oh, that's very sweet to me and to Brie. Um, please have Brie as a consistent co-host. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Our contracts may conflict with the uh, bad faith. And, uh, but yeah, we should definitely more. This is twice in. Um, a little when did I have you on? Yeah. 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 The last, was that on Tuesday, Wednesday? That, we were on the debate. You were on the debate. It was yeah. last. Yeah. When was the debate? Last Thursday? <laughs> Oh, so yeah, within a week, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a fun night. I am. Um, I left you kind of abruptly because I had to go join Cornell West on his show. And I oh, right. Press. How was that? I do. You, you know, I had the best time on there. You know, a lot of what I don't mean this. You know, yes. In a to undermine the conversation with Chomsky and the time that he took to talk with us, which I have a lot of respect for. But in a lot of ways, the conversation I had with. Um, Cornell West was the conversation I had wished we were able to have with Chomsky because right. Cornell West also thinks we should all vote for Biden, but was willing to entertain the tensions that I was bringing up of how yeah. no matter who inevitably leads to this place where we have very little political leverage and was very receptive and sensitive to the unique position that Black Americans have been in voting blue yes. numbers forever. And I felt you know really heard and listened and was responsive and was at least trying to work through these things. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, I don't really get, um, like, why we can't. I mean, the irony is that I think, like, you know, for all the the chiding of people who aren't automatically voting for Biden, it's kind of ironic because that's the kind of, if your point is to, like, convince people to vote for Biden because you think Trump's an existential threat, then have, like, a conversation that that doesn't alienate people like you want to convert some people yeah um yeah our conversation on bad faith with Marion williamson i think converted a lot of people and we got comments because chomsky was the next week we got comments that say okay Marion williamson convinced me to vote for biden and then right. no, chomsky convinced me to not <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's interesting the same arguing right Yes. Yeah. And maybe Noam Chomsky is like, uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, the irony is I get Chomsky being like, I'm 92 years old. I've done enough. But it is like, again, if the point is conversion. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. That's just the big irony. But he's like, it's up to you. I mean, one thing I will say about a point that I think Chomsky made that I think is good, which I think you probably agree with, I mentioned this earlier, is that like, we, there's a difference between like saying we're going to do that now and we should have done that earlier and like Mm -hmm. we're going to do that moving forward. Because I felt like sometimes the chat with you and Noam um, was it was like mixing a theoretical proposal with yeah. like a one to do right now. Well, at, at several points in the conversation, though, we said, OK, assume everyone on this podcast is voting for Biden. Right. Just like for yeah. the same argument, assume everyone here is convinced. What do we do to prevent us from being the same place in 2020, right. 2024? Like that was the repeated right. about yeah. what are we going to do in the intervening three, three years, particularly right. given that we just went through the period of the most active activism in American history, the most number of people in the streets in American history, and it didn't have any effect on Joe Biden's policy. So how do we push him left? What is different than what we've already been doing that we're going to do? And isn't it reasonable to consider whether voting or with with one's vote a year prior, six months prior to an election could be part of that strategy. Or three years in this case. I mean, that's like the Lawrence, the the, that Lawrence O'Donnell clip that Jimmy Dore played. That's where I first, or he mentioned it. I first heard about it through Jimmy Dore, where he's like the left. I worked on the Senate. We do not listen to the left because they have nowhere to go. Yeah. And look, we do have to, yeah. Courted courted like uh, the prettiest girl at the fair. It's the, um, John Kasich and and all of these kinds of characters, yeah. right? Yeah. Who's like really bad? He's not like a moderate Republican. He's a reactionary who's just like nice. Like he's a polite reactionary. I think there's like a lot of Republicans. There's a lot of very nice people on the left who also happen to believe what 88% of Democrats believe in terms of policy. And not only have we not been courted, we've been right. aggressively maligned. And right. I'm just saying the whitewashing of him is like totally inappropriate. Like, I I mean, like, it's not like there are some people who like they're they're Republicans, but like he's not even close. His it's just he has an affect that's not Trumpian. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. 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 He's not like this isn't like a Republican. You're like, you know, he's Republican, but there's like nothing good about him, except I have a suspicion that his wife or his mother or someone close to him struggled with addiction problems because Mm -hmm. he has like a weird inconsistent like empathetic stance on that yeah i listened to him um you know talk to you know senator turner on our podcast recently and she you know has a a, a, a direct working relationship with him you know as a state senator and but he was very helpful to her in trying to get justice for timmy rice so like like, solidarity literal child right you know like being done in the playground you know, that's one of the least kind of controversial of he was all. The one he was playing with the toy gun. Is that? Uh-huh. Yeah. Like of all of the things you could be mad at and say it was their fault. I mean, that's. Right. Yeah, that's not, yeah. so I'm not surprised that he was helpful and I'm glad that he was helpful and, you know, credit where credit's due, you know, but, you know, should he be in the Joe Biden administration? Like that's a very different right. question. And should they be trying to court people like him more than they're trying to court people like Rashida Blip? Like, that's a very different question. Right. Um, And it's frustrating. And what's more frustrating about it is that, okay, that's the choice. If that's a choice that you're going to make, then that's a choice that you're going to make. But you can't be kind of surprised when the left objects and wants to defend itself. But defending oneself in the face of actual, like, personal attacks is perceived as helping Trump. And you could fix that by simply not punching left anymore and we would all sit you know, for the most part, I would sit quietly and only respond. You know, I'm only right. responding when, or just ignore or ignoring you when you're like, you're gonna get upset by that. Like, right, right. You you shouldn't chastise the person who's like feeling punched. Right. If you if they feel like they can win without us, right. With the message that they're sending. It's also weird to be simultaneously begging us yeah. to not just to be su- supportive in terms of voting, but to be vocal cheerleaders. Um, yeah the way that many people online are it's not begging though if only they were begging well what i like that they say about you is that you're both like totally powerless and the reason that bernie won and the reason that biden will lose 